All right, and break's over. Let's continue. Uh, the creation of Pakistan is a separate Muslim state. Uh, around this time, the 1930s, Muslim League starts to ask for a separate state as part of the process of decolonization. Early on, they worked together. Uh, with the Look Now Pact, which was made during World War I, this called for the INC and the Muslim League to cooperate and work together. And here is Gandhi and Jinnah cooperating, working together, palling around. Uh, but it's not working anymore. Uh, the failure of these first roundtable talks of 1930, uh, they result in the call for the creation of Pakistan. And Pakistan literally means a land of the pure in Urdu, and is uh, made up of the initials for the Muslim-majority states, uh, the strong Muslim areas uh, in Punjab, uh, the Afghan frontier, Kashmir, and Sindh. And so these ma uh, majority Muslim areas, uh, they start to call for a separation. 1935, the Government of India Act is... Another attempt by the British to give them a little bit more rights, but not enough. INC says it's too little too late. Both sides still participate in the election as kind of a test case, and the INC dominates this election with 70%. They win, uh, and the Muslim League wins very little, causing increased tensions, but also the realization that they really need to have uh, certain rights guaranteed, otherwise they're going to be dominated and never really get their voice and Jinnah hoped that at least the Muslim League could be part of the coalition governments in certain areas with large uh, Muslim populations, even if they lost heavily in the election. So they're hoping their voice would still be heard in these elections. But the INC is celebrating. They won strongly. And so they're not too willing to compromise with the Muslim League. And they, the Muslim League felt, and they start to feel further out. And in some cases, the INC Muslims are given positions of authority. And to kind of further prove that uh, Muslims are welcome in the INC. Uh, but then there are other cases where INC members go too far to promote Hindu causes. And some of the members start to promote Hindu symbols for India and promote the use of the Hindi language above all. This was never INC policy. INC policy is all about just independence of India and unity. Uh, but some members start to go too far on Hindu nationalism. And so Jinnah starts to use the slogan of Islam is in danger. As in some of these areas, uh, that Muslim minority was just, the voice was not heard. And so they start to see the risk of a Hindu dominated India uh, that uh, they're going to be drowned out. That voice will be gone. Uh, even within the INC, we start to see a split between the left and right wing ideologies that were just impatient with this slow change. And they thought Gandhi was moving way too slow. They wanted some different strategies possibly violent strategies if necessary, as nonviolence is just so slow, it's not working out. Gandhi tried to maintain unity by ensuring that each of these major leaders would serve as INC president. So to calm down the left wing, we get Jawaharlal Nehru serving as president in 1936-7. Hey, to calm down the more radical, possibly violent wing, uh, we get Subhas Chandra Bose serving as president in 38. Bose goes up for re-election. And it's a tighter election and somewhat contested. Uh, they're not sure if he won fairly. And it's just not, to, it's a bit too close. Uh, so Gandhi opposes his re-election as his policies were just too radical. They could promote violence and cause further party splits with the INC. Without enough moderate support, Bose leaves to form a separate forward bloc party, kind of what Gandhi was worried about. Uh, but in the end, this uh, forward block party is pretty, is pretty small. So here's Bose. Um, but the party is just too small to really have too much impact. World War II comes along, and England sends over Stratford Cripps hey, to offer independence in return for support during World War II. Uh, so it's a, this is kind of the big deal. We'll give you independence. You just got to really help us out right, during the war. INC says, uh, no, we don't have to help you out. And they reject the officer. Um, they reject the offer as, as something that's just stalling the inevitable. August 1942, okay, Gandhi gives his Quit India speech, and the INC adopts the Quit India campaign, calling for immediate independence, and they relaunch the non-cooperation campaign. And the, the campaign is very simple. They just tell England to go away. That's all you got to do. Walk away. Quit India. Just quit. Go away. Get yeah. Uh, and the UK is not too happy with that uh, response. And so they, re they react by arresting all the top INC leaders. They ban the existence of the party and further elections. 
60,000 are imprisoned without trial, including Gandhi and Nehru. 1,000 are killed as the UK tries to keep control, as people are freaking out and rioting, as their leaders have just been arrested for saying, get out, go home, quit India. Jinnah, however, because we start to see this split with the Muslim League, Jinnah takes the deal. He accepts the offer, but he demands a two-state solution after independence. He says, all right, we'll work with you, but I want my own country. We're going to split. The Muslim League uh, gives a lot of support to the British during the war. And while the British continued to attack the INC, the Muslim League uh, really didn't uh, help out too much. And so uh, that's going to further that split between the two parties. Uh, this support for the UK would definitely strengthen their position in later negotiations and that they were there to help out a lot more. Okay, one example, uh, the Indian National Army. And so uh, we mentioned uh, Bose, uh, Subhas Chandra Bose, uh, as a radical a couple of slides back. And so he was part of the army, he joined the army, uh, but was captured as a prisoner of war, eventually transferred over to, an, I believe he's, he's captured in a, the European battlefields, sent over uh, to serve in a Japanese POW camp, prisoner of war camp. And while there, he works with the Japanese to create a army of Indian, uh, Indian prisoners that are against British rule. And so the Japanese army helps him to create this anti-English army. And they help to fight allied forces in Burma. And they even started to invade parts of northern Northeast India. Uh, but ultimately, they will be defeated by the allies. Uh, later on, Bose dies in a plane crash at the end of the war. Uh, there's certainly conspiracy theories, but uh, likely it was just an accident. Uh, many faced, and so a lot of the army, the, this first Indian National Army that was anti-British but was pro-Japanese, which is a little awkward, uh, a lot of these soldiers, they faced treason trials after the war. But most Indians saw them as martyrs for the cause, that they were fighting for an independent India. So the UK reduced their sentences after the protests, but the protests kept on coming. Uh, even the Royal Indian Navy started to mutiny, uh, with 20 different naval bases completely just rejecting British rule and taking over. So what's India going to look like once the English are gone? The INC just wants one big old India and everybody's going to get along. Everybody's going to work together because Gandhi is able to unite them. A secular state, a non-religious state okay, where everybody's going to get along. Muslim League says, yeah, that's nice. That's not going to work, though. Okay, we want two separate states. We want a Pakistan and we want an India. Muslims are 20% of the Indian population. They're just worried about Hindu domination in the new government. And the elections in 1937, Japanese, so they showed that. Uh, INC leaders, like Gandhi and Nehru, they tried to bring the Muslims back. They tried to reassure them they would have a place in this new government. Okay? But just uh, the last 20 years had shown them that, uh, no, that's not working out. So during the negotiations between the INC and the UK, uh, Jinnah called for direct action. So he calls on his supporters to show Muslim support for a separate state. So it's a little vague on what exactly he's calling for, whether or not he was calling for violence is debatable. And so he calls for a direct action day, August 16th, 1946. And this just results in riots. Uh, riots start in Calcutta and they spread and these turn to Hindu and Muslim communities just killing each other. Uh, this results in the Great Calcutta killing, 4,000 killed, with uh, some terrible atrocities committed on both sides. So Hindu families, Muslim families, whole communities, uh, towns are just turned against each other. Uh, with increased violence, the INC begins to say, okay, maybe we'll give in to this two-state solution uh, because uh, this is going too far. And so here is Jinnah uh, making the speech to call for this direct action. Here's a little cartoon. The Saint and the Tiger, where Gandhi is trying to hold India back, but this communal ferocity and this violence cannot be held back. And these uh, different religious communities, they fight. February 1947, Lord Louis Mountbatten, what a British name, uh, is sent over as the last viceroy to negotiate and finally hand over power. And so in six months, he has to decide 
how is England going to get out? Is, are they just going to walk away? And what's the next step? So he's sent to kind of help negotiate between these two parties. So some of the different problems that he's got to solve, well, is it going to be one state? Is it going to be two states? Is it going to be more than two states? Uh, and when I say more than two states, going back, we've got uh, Muslim majorities here in West Pakistan. And we also have Muslim majorities here in East Pakistan. And so this could break into three countries as eventually it's going to happen and possibly even more countries as India continues to fight. So going back uh, to that question, it's going to be how many countries is, is this going to birth? Uh, where are the borders going to be and who gets what land? What happens to the princely states? Certain chunks of India were still under the control by princes. And so he finally goes with the two-state solution. Northwestern India and East Bengal will be given to Pakistan. So it'll be one country, but it'll be two different chunks of land, which is going to cause problems. The princely states had to choose. Each of the individual little princely states, you know, almost like little city-states, they're going to have to choose which they want to be a part of. Uh, most areas had a mix of Hindus and Muslims, so the plan required millions of people to move back and forth, and that's going to result in further violence as people are kicked out of their homes and have to move to a country that's going to be more welcoming to them. Uh, August 15th, 1947, the UK leaves, and India and Pakistan gain their independence, but it's not going to be an easy independence, and really it still isn't today. Okay, so that's kind of hopefully going to answer the question, what methods did the Indian nationalist movement use to achieve independence?